Number one fact. Did you know in Australia in 2009 they had to introduce a culling program to deal with its massive feral camel problem? Wait a minute, a camel. <laughs> Camel. Where to? Australia. This isn't an in, this isn't indigenous to Australia. This am, this animal either. Well, it's, it doesn't surprise me. Australia has all the worst animals known to man. You really expect and a camel to be there? A camel. Where the hell do they get camels from? This is very strange. Allegedly, they brought camels over at probably the beginning of the last century, and some of them got loose, and they've just been out there copulating. And there's now you, now they've had to bring in a culling program, so people are going out there and shooting all these wild camels yeah that, that that's a weird one isn't it i've not camels why would you they, they must be um a man eaters by now because every you know what it's like in australia everything is a, a man eater don't care where it is a spider yeah i'll kill you snake i'll kill you too yep. a, an ant would probably kill you over there fire ant fire ants yeah. they have over there the big ants okay yeah we go then they'll kill you you name it, literally everything kills you in Australia. Yeah, vampire camels. Vampire camels. They probably store human blood in them humps. Wouldn't surprise me. Sneaky camels, especially Australian camels. There's this thing, you know, they do that, uh, that program on television about um, Australian border security. And they're always like, you can't bring this stuff into Australia. It's because for so many years, they allowed these, these things to happen because it started off with British people. That's how it always starts with the <laughs> holiday makers. It's always holiday makers. They went out there and they thought it's quite sunny here. It's got well, sun lounges. You say holiday. I, I wouldn't call going to prison holiday. Uh, well, it would be, compared to how hard run a prison it is. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like an holiday camp in a prison these days. We've got but camels at the back. Camels at the back and uh, uh, stingrays at the front. Uh, did the camels breed with any other animals? Like, I know they bred with spiders because you get the camel spiders. I don't know how they work that, but like, I presume the uh, spider was on top. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, well, actually, camels, ca camels have to, like, imagine being a camel, what a nightmare. Like, every time you go to bed, you have to, like, push down a couple of lumps into your mattress just to get comfortable. Well, yeah, I don't, I've, I've never actually, how do camels sleep? They, they get, if they get a lot of nightmares, not very well. I think it's the blood that, that they drink, human blood. Human blood does give you nightmares. Yes. Yeah, if I was a camel, you could drink and walk, couldn't you, uh, and ride. Because you just fill your humps with uh, booze. Well, yeah, and you've got your own cigarette brand as well. The booze and fags sorted. A bit of human blood. <laughs> Maybe we've worked out why there's so many of them in Australia. They probably but bribing the police. Actually, I have a question about police. Maybe you know the answer to this. Can a police horse arrest a normal horse? Yeah, of course they can. Yeah, you, yeah, you'd be able to. You've got the authority if you're a horse. Yes. You, you're nicked, son. And, and you, Nixon? You bite, you're nicked. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nixon. You're giving the horses. Horses can't do the peace sign for a start. They've only got little stupid paws. Not paws. What the horses have? <laughs> Hooves. Hooves. <laughs> Hooves. Same thing. It's a paw. It's a paw with a, a lucky horseshoe on there. Exactly. Why the, yeah, lucky for the horse. You get. Yeah, I tell you what. Horses like evolution doesn't cut it. Let me hammer in a couple of uh, horseshoes. It's uh, what came first? First the horse or the horseshoe? That's what I'd like to know. Is a camel a horse? Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing in dis in disguise. They just, you know, what horses are like try and get away with anything. Could you put a horseshoe on a camel? I'd like to. I would like to see a, a horse with a hunchback mm. with um, camel feet with horseshoes on. <laughs> with horseshoes on, because they're the same hooves. Yeah, no, I, I think camels don't do what camels do. Is they they knock two coconuts together when they walk? What with their what with their front their front hooves? <laughs> with their front legs. <laughs> yeah. With their front legs. So yeah. Australia's got a problem with their, their camels problem, feral camels which weren't aren't indigenous. Do Aborigines mm. did they used to ride on camels? How far back does this go? I've never seen oh. an Aboriginal fella on the back of a camel. For a start, they wouldn't be. Imagine how stupid you'd have to be looking around the yeah. desert in Australia for water. Thinking you're clever, 
riding on a camel. Like you'd be like, well, he's uh, you got two humps worth of uh, water and camel blood right there to drink. Yeah, filled up with human blood, as you said. This this brings up more questions than it's answering. This this initial question, I think. So the other thing about Australia that I do know about them in introducing non-indigenous animals to the country is they brought in. I think it was mink. Mink not, who's he? Mink who's he? I don't know who mink who's he is. A minky. <laughs> A minky, yeah, a, not a minky, <laughs> not a monkey, not going back to the monkey conversations. Are um, minks related to monkeys? I think they're related to bears. Are bears related to monkeys? If you go back far enough, probably. Yeah, the first human was a monkey. But was the first monkey... Uh, no, that doesn't make any I don't, sense. <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. Like, I don't mm-hmm. even know if... I don't even know if monkeys can swim, let alone swim in soup and and turn into humans how do they even they say they ex- monkeys escape the water i, I don't believe yeah. that well you never see a monkey a... fish or monk fish maybe that's where they come from you see yeah you do get monk fish here's something for you then you have monkeys which we say we evolved from yes well you it, 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 it maybe your family well i am quite hairy but if, have you ever seen a dolphin's skeleton? Not first hand. They have fingers and they have legs which are fused at the knees and the ankles. So a bit, a bit like E.T. Yes. So at some <laughs> point, a monkey or a monkey-esque slash human yeah. decided they didn't like to live on the land anymore and they went back to the sea. Oh, they just went, fuck this. I, 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 fuck this for a game. I'm going in the sea. Back in the sea back in the sea and evolved to be in the sea so, but they kept all their fingers and arms and legs do, the, do, do dolphins have tailbones oh that is a very they may have the same as we've got just a little stub if you drill a hole into a monkey's skull can they live underwater uh, probably not live they, you could <laughs> probably put a monkey down there i don't know how long they would live for Probably drilling a hole in the head wouldn't help either, would it, I suppose? No, no, that would probably do it. That would probably do it. Well, I'll scrap that plan. <laughs> scrap that plan. That was so, my Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, damn it, that Saturday's gone down at the beach. It is. It, is. it, was, it, it sounded like such a good day. Me and the monkey were going to go down to the beach. He's going to drill a hole in his head and set him free. Down, as a dolphin. As a dolphin. Live your life <laughs> as you see fit, my friend. You want to be a dolphin? Yeah. Be free. We don't judge here. (laughs) (laughs) Would you like the next fact? Yes, please. Talking about drilling, Soviet scientists tried to dig a hole through the Earth's crust in the 1970s. It's called... One man? uh, uh, It says scientists, so I'm guessing more than one. More than two, two. I'm guessing. Yeah, Yeah. at least two. Weirdly, talking about Australia... The Kola super deep borehole reached 40,318 feet deep before they stopped. Why did they stop? Because the temperatures got up to 356 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 150 degrees Celsius, making the project infeasible. It is still the deepest borehole humans have ever dug. Send a monkey in. Drill a hole in his head. He'd be fine. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Or a camel. Uh, send a camel down. He's got water. He can cool himself off. Self-regulating temperature. Exactly. That is very deep, though. 40,000 feet. That's as high as airplanes fly. Underground. Underground. Straight down. Is it airplanes I... underneath the girth or? Hollow, hollow earth theory. Surely they didn't think it was hollow earth, did they? But, but how do we know still? They only got so far in. They only got as as far as an airplane could fly into the earth. Well, They didn't, didn't even I... try a monkey. No, I want to know what the idea of this was actually for. We all know what it's like, right? Again, back to the beach. When you're a kid, right? You get, you, get, you start digging a hole. Another yes. guy is going to join up and go like, are you digging a hole? Yeah. It's like, sweet. Can I, can I help? Like, yeah. Next thing you know, it's about eight of you digging a hole. That's true. If you don't put any limits on that, like your parents go, like, enough of the hole digging, you, you're, you're going to get uh, buried alive or something, then um, yeah. if there's no rules, then I just keep digging. I would. <laughs> they, they'd be like, come on, come on, it's time for dinner. No, no, just give me a yeah. pet lunch. I'm fine. Me and, me and the lads are digging a hole. Did they actually think they could get to, well, where would, where would they get to in Russia? Would that be Brazil? 
you, you, what you would do is reach the other end of the flat earth. Or probably they'd never find the end because because of the donut earth, you just keep going round in circles. And what you'd have left is a, a large hadron collider. Wouldn't it have been interesting if they kept digging and then they came up right up next door to where they'd just started digging down oh you'd be gutted so because you had your stronger team on like the left hand side it always yeah. was twisted in <clears throat> and you ended up back where you were i think what would happen is you you dig you reach the other end like you said you you back up to yourself again and when you appear you you've gone back in time and the other end had been filled in and you're on an endless loop ne never start digging be careful whoa back to the future all over again you're still digging would it get to a stage though where you're not digging down you're then digging up because you're coming out of the ground it's all making sense that's really that, that i've i've kind of done my own brain in thinking about that well we figured it out if only the scientists could you know have the mental power that we have exactly are they still i couldn't find out why they did this though i think it was just to do something <laughs> it's, yeah. it's one of those council things you know like with the council get some money and they're like we're gonna build a statue of a thing for reasons and then they build a statue and everybody's like what is this monument for yeah it's, the, it's a monument <laughs> to 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 recognize the efforts we made to make this monument <laughs> yeah exactly we, t we took a lot of time and a lot of wages to make this they probably had a thing with the council and it's like we need to dig a hole up in the road because at the end of the year thing we got to make it look like we're busy they started that and they just got funded two weeks later and just kept getting funded what are we doing i don't know we're, we're digging a hole I better throw some money in there and they just kept going and they're like you know what we're getting we're, we're getting a good wage doing this we can stretch this out for a couple of years don't blame them you're a big fan of cats i know that yes i love cats did you know that cheetahs cannot roar but instead meow like house cats cheetahs yes but they can't roar Africa. at all they don't roar they they go meow like house <laughs> cats like what meow. no i didn't but um next time i see one yeah you're not meant to do that you're a big cat now <laughs> you're a big cat you're not a baby cat you're a big cat you've done a big cat up. school i think it's uh they're just playing up i think they're just doing it on purpose for the humans yeah but then call a cheetah for nothing one thing i do know about cheetahs one of the guys i used to work with was actually a south african and he used to be like a, a safari man he said that you could train a cheetah like a dog so if you got them as a as a cub you could train them and they would be like a a dog they would be loyal chase balls protect you all of this stuff and rip your face off and rip your face off if something went round. a bit like these people who, who collect not collect that's the wrong word have monkeys as and chimpanzees would never have a chimpanzee as a pet they will rip your arms and legs off for fun they'll uh, rip the um bits off you covered by uh, bathing outfits <laughs> they, they love those bits and your eyes and like you said fingers and things they know what to look for they know the worst damage they can get and they specifically go for them bits don't they and chimpanzees are incredibly strong i've tried they... holding one down many a times like that it's really hard to hold the chimpanzee down yeah go and leave it leave yeah. it dave dave the leave chimpanzee it. leave it uh, it's usually with it with an arm around you know covering the mouth with a bit of chloroform <laughs> oh, well it's stroking the hair on the top of the head <laughs> yeah it's okay go to sleep it's all right but yeah those are, are vicious brutal things not saying to be trifled with no that, that's why i like to drill holes in the heads for breathing but, purposes underwater of course exactly not for any other n nefarious reasons no, I, I, I don't know if, if monkeys are into uh trepanery maybe uh, a what trepanery you know a trepanery we all we all do it right? what's that uh where you drill holes into your head for relief i I've, I've never i did not know that you've had a hard day at work you yes. come back you crack a beer open you know, you yes. can chill out, maybe have a cigarette or something like that. Drill a hole in your head to relieve a bit of pressure. I, I see. It's science. It's, You're living in the past. I am. It's like people electrocuting other people for, for medical reasons. Stuff like that. But we all do a bit of that as well. Depends on how hard just, a week it's been. Well, exactly. You, you, that's the next step up. Talking about these horrible things, let's talk about something nice. Do you know that babies are born with 300 bones where adults only have 206? I have 207 sometimes. <laughs> but babies also, I'm not, I 
don't believe this, but that allegedly babies are also born without kneecaps. <laughs> Fools. I've got two kneecaps. What have you got? I'm going to make fun exactly. of them even more now. Exactly. Those losers. Losers. Where are your kneecaps? <laughs> Where are your kneecaps? You're for... No wonder they can't stand up. Yeah, exactly. Idiots. You can't even That's... think properly like an adult. Exactly. They're like chimpanzees, but less violent. Uh, funny enough, they can breathe underwater as well, though. They can breathe underwater. Or, hang on, can they breathe underwater? Is this how, just to edit, for yeah. anybody listening, do not try this at home with babies, just in case. <laughs> no, but, you know, you can get you can give birth in, in a pool because, of course, we know that uh, humans have gills, like um, like in Waterworld when we're born, but they, they heal up to compensate for the lack of kneecaps. Weirdly, when you said about babies underwater, my mind automatically went to the Nirvana album. Never mind. It's all the proof you need. How old do you reckon that baby is now? That's well, got to be a fully grown man now. Unless he lives in the water still. He don't know whether he accepted. Maybe he was like a dolphin. He went out and went back in. Whoa. And I, I bet he still doesn't that. have kneecaps. Well, maybe that's maybe that's where the whole kneecaps being fused on a dolphin comes from. But you have to when you crawl. Like when I was born, and uh, I mm. swam over the sea, and I developed kneecaps by crawling on the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and if you can't be bothered, that's all dolphins are. They couldn't be bothered to be a human. Nah, too much hard work back in the sea. That's all there is. Lazy buggers. Eating sardines all day, mucking about. Good but... luck in SeaWorld, fellas. Yeah, you haven't got a pension though, have you, for when you get older? <laughs> Jump through this hoop. Yeah, work for it. Be jumping through that hoop forever. You haven't got a pension to look forward to. I've gone slightly off topic here and got a bit bitter about me having to pay into a pension. I apologise for that. Back to a serious fact, and I love this one, and I checked, and this is actually true. During World War One. France built a fake Paris outside of the capital to confuse German pilots. What, what, did, which one survived, <laughs> the real one or the fake one? It doesn't say, but we could be seeing fake Paris as real Paris. For Paris. For Paris. Oh, but they built they, a whole city. If you recreate Paris yes. with Eiffel Towers and uh, Eiffel Towers, like a, yeah, why not? Two of them. What's to distinguish from the real thing? You might as well go like, do you know what? Let's get rid of the old one. But let you living in the past. Let's stick to this new Paris. I'm I assuming it was wooden, but I can't guarantee that. I'd have to look into it a bit more. Is real Paris wooden? I don't know. I've been to Paris a couple of times, and every time I go go there, it gets slightly worse. So probably best just to start again with new fake Paris. I would. Uh, maybe maybe if they moved it to Wales, it'd be better. Yeah, Paris part three. Welsh edition. Put it in Cardiff Castle. Yeah, why not? Why don't they make Cardiff Castle and put the Eiffel Tower on the top of it? I'll be even bigger. I like the sound of it. Yeah, let's go big. We need to yeah. uh, rule the world again off yeah. once. Well, you are still a principality. You are a um, fantasy land. Fantasy land. Fantasy. Well, it's like a like King Arthur and all of that because you've got the dragons there still, haven't you, and everything. Oh yeah, we we got dragons. They're, they're a nuisance. They kill most of the camels. It'll keep the camel population down, which is always good. <laughs> Stop you having to get, have a culling like we found out in Australia. I still go hunting them. You know, I, I call it my own personal cull. Of a lot of species, don't you? <laughs> Dolphins, about... monkeys, yeah. dragons. Yeah. Some people say it's a vendetta, but I don't like to think of it that way. I call it a cult. You with call it a, a hobby. A, yeah, it's a hobby. And um, because I do it with um, hatred, it means nothing. No, you're not getting paid for it, so it's not like it's a it's a job. But it's kindness is its own reward, isn't it? Exactly. To change tact ever so slightly, McDonald's fries somehow contain 17 ingredients. You would assume it would have been potato and salt. Potato, salt, and, and oil that they cook her in, and, and maybe a few drops of human blood. But other than that, nothing else should be in there. I just find it quite strange that this one comes immediately after fake Paris. So fries, mm. French fries, France, uh, fake Paris. It's There's a link there, I would say. Yeah, it's, it's only 17 ingredients in France as well. Pretty much. The, um, garlic. Um, <laughs> baguettes, snails, baguettes, berets, berets. Stri stripy jumpers, and um, bicycles. But there we go. And a so ho 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 ma 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 after everything. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 
uh, when... shrugging your shoulders nonchalantly at ev uh, every answer to anything. Mm. Yeah. So seventeen ingredients in, in, in a yes. in a in a bag of chips. Yes. What could you possibly? What, what do they put? What are they putting in them? I, uh... I bet. I bet a monkey. Uh, if you give a a monkey a McDonald's meal, you'd be like, nah. Yes. I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll pick the fleas off my. Uh, he's not even my friend, but I'll pick fleas off him and eat them because it's better. Well, I just it just seems a lot of seventeen ingredients. I'm I'm having trouble actually thinking of seventeen ingredients to put into anything. I could think of seventeen stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, how, how many varieties of blood are they putting in that for a start? Oh, well, you probably got the person who's cut the potatoes. Then you've probably yeah. got a blue plaster, I water from where they've been frozen, the oil. The, ah, you know what it is. It's because do they use the oil for cooking other stuff? Ah, oh, could be. I, like you said, bit of eyelashes falling in. A couple of those fingernails. Burger, because if they've done the burgers in there as well, the nuggets, chicken. So they're, they're going to have chicken bits stuck on them. A, 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 a dash of B.O. Because we all like a bit of odour in our ingredients. <laughs> yeah, odour, their perfume. Oh, de Paris. There we go. French fries. Yeah, it's all going back. Changing Latin. tact completely. Sailors in the US Navy were the first people to have like tattoos. The first people really... ever. No, no, like naval kind of like professional, professional sailors to be tattooed as in a part of their tradition. Oh, job, job description. Yeah, job Sorry. description. That's the word. Um, and it was to avoid being forced to join the Royal Navy. So say there was kind of like when we were over in America, when we owned them, if we were looking for... <laughs> the good old days. The good old days, you know. When we went through trying to find new sailors, yeah. we'd be like, do you want to come fight on our boat? We'll pay you a pound a day or whatever. It's a bit and, steep. Uh, there we go, a pound a week. There we go. We pay you 17 ingredients. You can make your own McDonald's flop fries <laughs> from that. But they used to have a tattoo. So they'd look and they'd be like, oh, this one is one of them. He's for the other side. He's that's a wrong why one. He's a wrong one. This... They'd have. The, that's what their tattoo was. And that's why the US sailors started the tradition of having tattoos. Made them. Did they, so they made them have these tattoos. It seems to be. It was to prove American citizens that citizenship and avoid being forced to join the Royal Navy. I think they should bring it back. Yes. Uh, you work for McDonald's and you're going like, oh, I'm thinking of joining uh, Burger King. Like, get them a McDonald's stamp. Go and out trade it. You can't, you can't be having it. This kind of sabotage in, in the economy. Oh, I see. It's like if somebody wants to, to go from like, like you say, from McDonald's, they'd be like, you know what? You're out on a night out. Somebody goes, you know, these jobs at Burger King. You'd be like, I can't lift up your sleeve loud and proud. Yeah. Got to protect your secrets. Now, everybody knows McDonald's. Has their secrets. I think they. Uh, it's a Scientology thing. I think, isn't it? Quite possibly. My last fact is the most expensive chess set in the world is valued at over ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars for a chess set. Bear in mind, you can buy one for like five pounds with all the pieces. Where well, is this? A, were you talking like on Amazon or what? Uh, no, this is like a, a specialist kind of like super duper one. Okay. One of the kings yeah. weighs 165 grams, so it's quite heavy. One king piece alone weighs 165 grams of 18 karat gold and has 73 rubies and 146 diamonds. How many diamonds? 146. I'm assuming they must be tiny. <laughs> Amateurs. Because surely, if you wanted to make the most expensive chess set, you would make them out of diamonds, the actual figures. Don't bother with the gold. No, leave the gold out. diamonds, wouldn't you? But what if you made them out of massive stacks of money? Oh, I see. You're thinking about scale. You're blowing this up big. Well, yeah. So you're making like a suitcase and then like spray painting on the side a picture of a horsey for the night. Yeah, with gold paint. Obviously, gold spray paint. Who's buying this uh, chess set? I like the I like the way chess people be like. Oh, look at me, I'm so clever. You just paid how much on a on a chess set? Ten million. Who's an idiot? No, I get one for like two quid down down in the charity shop. Does the same thing. Does, Does the same exactly thing. the same thing. And you could play your chess set against their chess set and say winner takes all. Ha -ha. I don't need, I don't even play it right. I play it. Uh, I I use a chess set to play drafts. Because I'm I'm not stupid enough to learn how to play chess, which is a massive waste of time. You might as well play Call of Duty. You're not wrong there. 
Pe some people would say chess is the call of duty for intelligent people, but they're wrong. I've seen the guy who made Minecraft make millions out of his uh, game that he made. Minecraft. Yes. How much? How much did the chess guy uh, make? The guy who invented chess. How much did he make for his uh, game? Probably about two pounds, I'm guessing. What an idiot! And he and he convinced people to buy it because he said, "Oh, this is this is a I don't be playing drafts. That that's for idiots." A game of chess, but it's for super brainy people. How much does it cost? Uh, Fifty quid. You have to be, you have to be so stupid, clever that you're stupid to buy it. Especially a ten million pound chess set, and then you've got to find somebody to play it, play against. Exactly, you can't, it, it doesn't play itself, but you could. No. But uh, it's a, it's, you know, defeats the point of playing a game, then, doesn't it? And if you've got a ten million, a ten million dollar chess set, and you're playing against somebody, and they knock one of them over, and it falls on the floor and breaks, you're going to be really upset. Does that chess set come with a clock as well? Because you've got to have a clock. I'm assuming that comes separately. Yeah, That's probably, probably another two million quid. It's a two million quid watch. One of those ones with diamonds in it. And uh, I, I use a, uh, a sundial. <laughs> I've got a stick. I use chess pieces as sundials <laughs> to tell what time it is. Well, why not? So you're using a £10 million chess set as a sundial now? Yeah, I, I, and I've got my own pawns as well. I've heard about your pawn collection. Fast. <laughs> and, and, and and more superior to, to any king and queens out there. I've heard it is, uh, yes, it, is, it covers a lot of uh, areas. I've heard a pawn can um, conquer a bishop even. I've heard that. And I believe there's a joke there about horses as well, but we will end it there. Thank you very much, People Circus. Anything to add? Good night. Good night. Please like, subscribe and ring the bell.